Hey guys, it's Michelle from Cozy Egg. This is episode 88. And today is Monday, May 18th, 2020. So here we are again. Um, like I said, I'm trying to do sort of weekly videos while I have the opportunity to do it. Um, Eric has been doing a lot of webinars while we've been at home um, and so since he's not going out um, I try to take advantage of the times that he is teaching webinars in the evenings to do a little recording so uh, if you are new here uh, this is a uh, podcast primarily about cross stitching uh, I do occasionally throw in some quilting and knitting just for grins um, books, etc. So it's kind of a mishmash of all sorts of things that I love. And if you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back and um, we'll get right into it. So um, when last we left our heroine, uh, she was working on His Eyes on the Sparrow and so I'm working on that Monday through Thursday of every week. And then on Friday through Sunday, I switch to something else. And so that's what I'm doing for what I'm calling my sampler mania instead of stitch mania. And uh, so far that's working out really great. Uh, I, I like the length of time it's giving me to work on things. I like that it's giving me the opportunity to continue to focus on Sparrow. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, that being said, last week was not a good week at all. <laughs> it just was not a good week. I just kind of hit the end of my rope last week. And so I did not get a lot of stitching in. Uh, I will show you what I got done on Sparrow, um, but it was not a lot. So this is where I'm at. Um, again, this is the called for threads, uh, over dyed threads on 48 count Gonder linen. This is His Eyes on a Sparrow by Heartstring Samplery. And so last time I had started this cow, he's still not done. So I did get the rest of the Cider Mill Brown um, done, and as you can see, I'm starting to fill in his spots. So he's almost done, but yeah, didn't happen. Um, I just couldn't, I just couldn't focus last week. I just could not. So that's okay. I'm picking this back up tonight, and... Um, I'll see if I can manage to get the rest of the spots in tonight. Uh, last, was it Tuesday, Wednesday? Whatever day that was, that was the 13th, uh, was dark 13 stitching. And I knew it was dark 13 stitching. Uh, first thing in the morning, I posted up on Instagram, hey, it's dark 13 stitching. What you guys gonna work on? But somehow by the time I sat down to stitch that night, I had completely forgotten it was dark 13 stitching. Luckily, Emily C. Eclectic Possessions messaged me and said, how's your dark 13 going? And I said, uh, one moment, please. <laughs> so I went and grabbed something for dark 13 to work on it because I'd completely, Tuesday seemed to last five days. So, assuming that was Tuesday. I think that was Wednesday, but whatever. Let's just peek because now it's bugging me. Wednesday. Wednesday was the 13th. So, I um, did what I had said I was going to do and then promptly forgot. And um, I got out a 
Plum Street Samplers, Hallow Eden, and worked on that. So here is Hallow Eden. I did not get a ton done. I basically did these two triangles down here, and that's it. But it was something, right? <laughs> so it was something. Um, but the fun part about when I was working on this is I decided to watch um, Trisha at 3L Threads. I decided to watch her first Mania video, which I think was like day one through five or day one through six or something. And so um, she was, had actually pulled this out and started it. And so it was fun that, you know, here I was working on mine and she had started hers. And so, yeah. Um, but at least I got a few stitches in. I had to do some ripping out, whatever. That was my dark 13. And so I am using some of the called for over dies. Some I substituted because I just didn't have them. And um, I'm stitching it on what I believe is a 36 count um, that Sylvia dyed. And I may possibly have over dyed it. I don't remember. Okay, so that was dark 13 stitching. And then I sort of went back to Sparrow, sort of not. Actually, I think most of the progress that I got done on Sparrow was on Thursday night, um, which is ironic because Thursday was like the worst day of the whole week last week. It was awful. Anyway, so then what I worked on after that, so on Friday, I got out my next piece that I was going to focus on for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so when I talked about this on my last video, I mentioned that the last time I had it out, I was in overthinking mode and so I had ripped out some colors, I had changed some colors and then later decided that was a huge mistake and I should have just left it the way it was. So I knew that when I picked this up the first thing that I was going, going to have to do was to rip out a bunch of stuff which I was not looking forward to. But Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, who consistently I won't say amazes me uh, but amazes me <laughs> with these great ideas that she has and the reason the reason I hesitate to say amaze me is because I feel like at this point I should know better <laughs> but so she she you know messaged me when she watched my video and she said why don't you just take which is a typical Diana approach, which I love, which is always my last, the last thing that comes into my head and usually not until she suggests it. She said, why don't you just take a little bit of time every night and do the ripping out so that on Friday you can just move forward with stitching. Ding, light bulb. That would be so smart. Then it wouldn't be super painful and then on Friday, I could actually spend time being productive and actually stitching. Hmm. That Diana knows what she's talking about. This is in my Parisville Tula Pink laminate bag that Sylvia made. So I took Diana's advice and I got this out each night and worked on ripping out my stitches. Um, and that's what I was doing when Emily messaged me on the 13th and said, how's your dark 13 going? And I was like, oh. anyway. All right, so this is the 
Marquois de Justine, which I'm just going to move that up there because the people that reproduced this, re-released it, yeah. Uh, I had some difficulty, we'll just say that. So, um, this is a reproduction sampler that was originally charted, uh, reproduced by uh, a woman named Anne Pelletier Pelot, which I'm probably horribly mispronouncing. Um, and uh, the sampler was stitched by uh, little Justine when she was eight. Um, unfortunately, she passed away at the age of 10. Um, so, it's a beautiful sampler. I bought this, it looks like, in, so, and then it was, you know, it was out of print, and then, of course, it was re-released by someone else. Um, around 2005-ish which is when I purchased it. So, uh, I am stitching this on a 40 count HDF linen, HDF being Vicki Clayton hand dye fibers, um, that Sylvia, I believe, um, did some uh, aging on. And then I did my own silk conversion. So in the chart, they give you like a dinky dye, the dinky dye silks to use, um, general arts, overdyed um, cottons, uh, DMC, etc. Maybe a Verisol also. I just did my own thing um, because I just did my own thing. So this is my own conversion. I am using a. Um, a mix of some Gloriana's and some Averisois. So now that I say that, I don't think that Averisois were called for, just the dinky dyes. So Averisois, um, Soie de Jose, blah, 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 Soie d'Alger, and Gloriana's, which are my favorite. And funny enough, I was watching someone's floss tube and they were mentioning how much they love Gloriana Arctic Ice. And funny enough, that's the blue that I'm using in this sampler. So I had two little interesting coincidences um, while I was stitching this week. So here's Justine. Um, and I love this sampler so much. So Sylvia and I started this together um, when we were in Paris and um, the last time that I worked on this was uh, when Notre Dame uh, caught fire and thus the reason for my me being overwrought and overthinking my threads. Anyway, so um, I actually got a good amount of progress um, despite the lack of progress that I got during the week. So I started this on, I picked up on Friday, worked on it through last night. And so basically what I did was I had ripped out a lot of the red um, here and up here. And so in here, so I had replaced, I replaced this with the, uh, with what I had originally chosen, stitched all this back, stitched this back, stitched this back. I brought this line up and over. I stitched a couple of these little fork things, stitched this flower. There is a uh, cross right here, crown. This is the top of a big altarpiece. You can see some of the candles um, that I've started stitching, this little motif. And then I basically uh, worked on, you know, bringing all of the words 
over. So this is about where page two ends. And so that's kind of what I was working on. So really the only thing that I have left on page two is to bring this border across. And then I've got that page completely finished. So I'm really happy with the progress that I made. And this, um, you know, the ecru color and that pale, pale yellow. Originally, when I looked at it, um, you know, I kept thinking, you can just barely see this and it's not showing up really well. Um, it shows up better in person than it probably shows up um, on screen or in photos. But the more that I looked at it over the weekend, the more that I thought, you know, it, I like that it looks so delicate and that it has that sort of look of an antique sampler where you have p places that are very pale and almost indistinct and then you have places where uh, you know the threads have retained their color saturation um, like with this red or with the blue um, some of the greens and so I kind of like that contrast between them of you know the very delicate barely there um, motifs and then the very vibrant and saturated reds and blues and greens so the other thing too is that that looks very French to me um, so the more that I looked at it this weekend, the more I fell in love with it. And the more I thought, you know what, this is turning out exactly the way that I want it to look. Um, and I am usually a big stickler about, you know, I want a lot of coverage. I want you to really be able to see all of the stitching. Um, and that bugs me when it, you know, fades into the background. But in this case, I really like how it's looking and I really think it actually is more true to the sampler I think um, you know one of the things that uh, Teresa kitten stitcher talked about in one of her videos or maybe multiple videos is that when she reproduces a sampler most times she charts the she uses the colors from the front of the sampler because she really likes that sort of faded antique look and um, you know a lot of people that do uh, reproduction samplers of course are working from the back where the colors are not faded because they've been um, you know uh, out of the light for however many years that they've been framed um, and so they have those vibrant you know vivid uh, colors to them kind of like you know it reminds me of many years ago when they first went through and uh, did that huge restoration on the Sistine Chapel you know to and when they cleaned off all of the soot <laughs> and dirt and uh, you know and everything that had accumulated over years and years and years and years um, you know art historians were shocked that the that the paintings were so vivid and so colorful um, so much so that um, you know it used to be uh, at one point it was actually uh, people that were studying um, Michelangelo you know we're looking at his work saying you know thinking that they were very um, muted and uh, dark sort of drab colors and so then to uncover these beautifully vivid uh, works was just astonishing anyway that's a total little art history tangent there so back on topic Justine, so I enjoyed my time with Justine. 
I'm glad to have that ripping out done. I'm glad to be back on track. And um, I was very pleased uh, to spend a little bit of time with her. And I don't think I showed you, like when I got this out initially, I don't think I showed you. So I have scissor gel in here, um, which is a little uh, pouch that I bought um, years ago uh, from a, an amazing quilter. Um, April 280 quilts this was way back when um, when she was making a lot of you know bags and pouches like this uh, which is very different than what she is doing now with her own hand dyed fabrics but anyway Tula Pink uh, had to have it but um, I actually carried this around with me basically like my wallet while I was in um, Paris and in Germany and so every time I see this it sort of brings back memories of those and I do have my Saju Eiffel Tower scissors um, in here that I bought at the Needlework show while we were there. Um, or no, I didn't buy them at the Needlework show. show. I bought them at Saju. Um, and it has the little Eiffel Tower fob here as well in the Saju uh, orange and blue. Colors. So, just had to show you that. Um, I keep them here in scissor jail, of course. So, all right. Um, and Justine is, of course, as you can imagine, well out of print as far as I know. So, unfortunately, because she's a beautiful sampler. So, speaking of that, another tangent. Um, of course, the weekend before I was working on Francis Eden, which is also out of print, but the attic actually has, um, more charts available of Francis Eden. So if you are interested in stitching that sampler, uh, which of course I highly recommend because it's beautiful, um, give the attic a call or email or whatever it is that they're wanting you to do right now. And they can hook you up with Francis Eden. Okay, so that's what I worked on uh, last week as well as over the weekend. Um, tonight, as I said, I'm going back to Sparrow and I will work on that Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, I have a new start planned um, which is my Happy Heart Sampler by Birds of a Feather. So I'm going to get that started. And um, then, of course, I will try to, I guess next Monday is Memorial Day, but hopefully, you know, that following week I can record again and show you where we're at. So, shall we continue with the Whip Parade? So I'm still on bucket one. Um... So let's just dig right in, shall we? And hopefully I can remember where I was at. Okay. You can tell how old this is by the kind of project bag. This is um, a bag that I got from the container store. Um, it's just sort of a mesh bag, zipper pull. Um, but I really like these bags and I don't remember how much I paid for them, but it was not much. So, and I think Nicole in her latest video, Nicole's Needlework, also mentioned that she gets um, some of her project bags from Container Store as well. So, this is my oldest whip. It is from, as far as I recall, around 2004. But it was before I really kept good records, so it, that's sort of a guess. But as far as I can tell, it was around 2004. <clears throat> I don't think this designer is designing anymore. But let me take this out. So her style, she did a lot of very beautiful, large, intricate pieces 
that um, she stitched all over one. And so that's how they were charted, was to be stitched over one. Um, my, she is actually local to me. And so my local needle workshop at the time, Ada Works, which sadly no longer exists, um, had several of her models in the shop. So I got to see them in person, which is how I fell in love with them. So I, you know, purchased this chart, purchased fabric for it. I was going to stitch it over one. Um, and this was pretty early on in my return to cross stitch. So I had not been stitching on linen very long and yeah. So sometimes I just jump in with both feet, right? Okay, here's the piece. This is called Dorothy's Garden and it is by A Stitcher's Hands. And the picture on the front of the chart is backwards. I don't know why, but you're not seeing things. The picture is actually backwards. So um, this is the photo of the chart and I just fell in love with it. I mean, I just thought it was absolutely stunning. Love that big house love you know these big beautiful roses and these butterflies in the corners and the birds here I just I absolutely love it so obviously it has an alphabet above and then at the bottom it says if all mankind would live in mutual love this world would much resemble that above so I am stitching this mostly in DMCs. It actually calls for a Verisois, um, but at the time I was like, uh, no, <laughs> no, not happening. There was, I think, one or two that didn't have a, a corresponding color in uh, in a Verisois, so I'm using the a corresponding color in DMC, so I'm using the Averisois. And there's the a Stitcher's Hands, that's the name of the person. So, here it is. And like I said, it is over one. which is the reason why it's my oldest whip. So, there it is. Um, and it's beautiful. I mean, look at that butterfly and the border and look at those roses. I mean, it almost looks like, you know, a petty point. I mean, it has that sort of look to it. But uh, yeah, this big old house, this big old white house, uh, may be the death of me. So uh, I have my border completely, you know, laid in there. Um, but as you can see from up here, the border consists of you know, an inner and an outer line, and then there is a lighter green in between those two. And then of course, these flowers that are in the border are pretty intricate in and of themselves. So, um, but I really love this. It just, you know, over one and it's on I believe 32 count but I need to just get it out and get it done or as Diana would suggest maybe you should just get it out and just you know do a little bit every day and then it won't seem so bad which would be a really smart thing to do so Dorothy's garden my oldest whip. Okay, 
This is in a Paris bag. You can guess who made this. And then on the inside, isn't that fun? So let's see what's in here. I think I know what's in here, but let's see. Okay, so this is Snooty Parrot by Barbara Anna. Snooty Parrot Sampler. And <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, so <laughs> I'm just gonna show you this because this is what I have in here. Um, this is what the sampler looks like. So this was a the year-long sow for Sampler World in 2015, maybe, 2014? I don't even know. Um, and so they had sort of divided it up into, you know, do this month one, month two, month three, whatever. So that's what this is. Um, but it's a really beautiful sampler. And, you know, when I first saw it, I was kind of like, eh. I'm not feeling an overwhelming urge, but you know how that goes, right? So then I decided, well, if I'm going to stitch it, I don't want to just do it like everybody else. So I got it in my head that I wanted to do it on 45 count linen. I had, um, you know, started that one, um, the little red chair sampler on 45 count and I really liked the look of that so I thought let's do 45 count and so I called up the attic and said hey Jean I'd really like to do see parrot on 45 count and she said well at the moment I don't have any 45 count but what do you think about 50 count? And I was like, 45, 50? Eh, sure, why not? Well, it wasn't 50 count. It was 52, 60 count. And so 52, 60 count is what I call an uneven weave, which means that in one direction, there are 52 threads to the inch and in the other direction, there are 60 threads to the inch. So a lot of antique samplers were stitched on uneven weave linen. So sometimes that's why you will see an antique sampler that, you know, is a square shape. And then when you put it on an even count linen, when you reproduce it, you know, then it's more actually rectangular or vice versa, whichever way that goes. But because, you know, designers that were reproducing antique samplers, I don't think had as much access to those higher count linens and especially the uneven weave linens um, previously, as we do now. Uh, so that's usually why you would see that difference. But uh, Jean assured me <laughs> that this would be fine. Um, but to stitch on that high count, I would need, uh, of course, very fine threads. So Tudor silks, sure, sign me up for that too. So um, I got my 5260 linen. And I had her send me the Tudor silks. And the lovely thing that Jean does when she cuts you a piece of the 5260 linen is that she will specifically tell you which direction everything is going. So in this piece is 52 threads to the inch vertically and 60 threads to the inch horizontally. If I flipped my fabric the other way, my 
piece would turn out square or more square than rectangular. And so we wanted to maintain that rectangular shape. So it was important to make sure that I had everything going the correct way. And so Jean wrote explicit instructions for me about what we had going on here. And so these are the Tudor silks and uh, I am shocked and appalled. I do not have them on any sort of a ring. They are just in here willy-nilly. Um, but they are, of course, beautiful. Gloriana Tudor silks are some of the most luscious, beautiful silks. Um, Gloriana, just in general, are probably my favorites. So lots of pretty colors, lots of pretty silks. And so let me show you my products. Needless to say, I do not keep up with the Sampler World uh, stitch along. Surprise. But here is where I'm at. So I have the border done completely. I have this top alphabet done. I've started on that second alphabet. Done that little berry ball. Deer. And then I have the tiniest little start on the parrot. And I really love him. I was really kind of trying to get down to him. Um, so this is an Adam and Eve sampler. Uh, this, the color of this is, it's Lakeside Vintage Exemplar. And so you can see against my fingers how small this is. I mean, it is tiny, tiny. But, you know, it's so good. But this is another one of those that I have to have good light. I have to be in the right frame of mind. And, you know, only one of two of those things happen regularly. But I really love this. I'd really love to get it finished. I think if it was on a, a larger count linen, I might be done with it. Um, I tell myself that, but that may or may not be a true statement. So, Snooty Parrot. Oh, there's my working copy. So, I'm right here. Okay. One of these days, an anomaly bag. This is a beautiful bag that Emily made for me that I just love. It's very French. I love it. And so it is housing. I think I know. Newer bag, newer start. <laughs> or more recent start, I should say. Okay. This is Heartstring Samplery, the Mary Pearson Sampler. And Beth actually just released this to the public. So this was a uh, workshop that she did for the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild last year, last May actually. Um, and uh, this is a picture of the antique. And it's a beautiful Adam and Eve sampler. It's got this beautiful pastoral scene, but the sampler itself was in really bad repair as you can see from 
uh, the blue sheep and all of the thread colors that ran, um, as well as there's a lot of linen loss there. So beautiful piece. Um, and I was really thrilled to get to meet Beth and take this class from her. Uh, this is the picture of the reproduction. So, uh, obviously this came as a kit. And here, so it was all in DMC. Um, and I just have everything in Flossilay bags. Uh, but lots of pretty colors. This crazy bright purple. And you may recall when I originally showed this, and you're not going to be able to tell from here, but it has this crazy, crazy snake. He's like three-dimensional and twisted threads and he's amazing. So I will insert a photo of that snake here. He alone is worth stitching the sampler. And even if you don't love the pastoral scene, you could easily stitch just this or even just this or even just the Adam and Eve. I like the whole thing. So here is my start. It is a very small start, but I did start in the center, which I don't normally do, but I did for some unknown reason. And so I started with uh, the verse and I sort of <laughs> worked my way up until I could get to the Adam and Eve because I really wanted to stitch them. Um, and that's where that crazy purple comes into play. Uh, and this needle minder was also a gift from Emily. I love it, it's a mosaic floor. I assume it's a floor. Anyway, um, yeah. So I, I really enjoyed working on this and I'd really like to get back to it, especially um, since I've been seeing it, uh, you know, since Beth re-released it, it's been kind of like on my mind. So I would like to get back to this, but you know, it's one of those, I barely have a start on this. I have other things that are farther along. I should probably focus on those first, but I'd really like to get back to this. And I think my linen is 40 count. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. This is another Sylvia bag. No idea what's in here. Oh, multiple things. Okay, so. Do I have a picture of this? Okay, so we're back to working copies. Uh, so the first thing that's in here is the primitive hair, the six wives of Henry VIII. This is a horrible photo, <laughs> but you get the idea. So I absolutely love this. And, um, I actually started this back when Eric and I were watching the Tudors, uh, on TV. And I am stitching it with. Uh, DMC. I don't recall if that's what's called for. Yeah, that's what's called for. So I'm stitching this on, I believe this is a 40 count gonder. So it's the same type of fabric, the same manufacturer that I am stitching his eyes on the sparrow on. But that is a 48 count. This is a 40. Um, and for some unknown reason, I am, I have been uh, stitching this in hand and rolling it up 
I, I, I can't explain it. Anyway, so here is my progress. So I have uh, Catherine of Aragon completely done and I'm working on Ambulin. And I started this and then afterwards realized I'm not sure if this is going to fit on my linen or not. <laughs> so I did this little basting stitch and ran it down and I think I'm going to be super, super close, but whatever. I, this was one of those, I want to start it and I want to start it right this minute. So that's what you get. It's a fun piece. Um, it calls for a bunch of French knots, like in between each of these gold squares. Um, and then I think on the B for Bolin, and maybe on the crown too, I don't remember. Anyway, I'm, I decided to leave those to last. But for whatever unknown reason, this is rolled up in my project bag. But I love this piece. I really like to get back to it. Um, and it's, you know, again, it's not a huge piece, but. Okay, so that's in here. The other thing that's in here is a sampler that was designed by Amy Mitten for the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild's 10th anniversary. You may recall this is our 20th anniversary, so this was for our 10th. And Amy Mitten is absolutely amazing. And so, when she, you know, presented this to us as a mystery sampler, she wrote an entire story that goes with it. Um, we got, you know, clues, and it was basically a whodunit interwoven with um, telling us about, uh, you know, historical motifs and things like that. And uh, it was just, it was super fun. And she hand dyes her own silks. Uh, they are available uh, through her website, uh, Fibers to Dye for D Y E. Uh, it may be under amymitten.com. You can Google. But these are her silks, and they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The thing that I love most about them are the names Venom, Morbid casket, Miss Marple, Maple, Butler Did It, Colonel Mustard, Old Lace, Sergeant Gray, Blood Red, and Red Herring. I couldn't have named them better myself. So, Fibers to Die For Silk, and uh, she we're doing this on a 40 count. It's just sort of a natural linen that we, she over dyed hers. Uh, of course, after we saw that, we were like, yeah, I want to over dye mine too. So uh, a few years ago, I restarted mine as my New Year's Day start. And so I ripped out what I had previously stitched in class and then did some tea dyeing on it and um, just gave it a little more character. So then I restarted it. So here is the sampler and it's an Adam and Eve, um, as you can see, and all of the motifs and everything on here uh, go as with Amy's, you know, typical uh, mode of operation, uh, go with the story um, and uh, relate back to that. Uh, there is some surface embroidery here 
there's some buttonhole stitch, um, etc. So I love it. Love it. And so here is my restart with it. Um, so uh, to do that uh, surface embroidery, or I guess it's detached buttonhole. So um, you stitch down your ground and then you, on a separate piece of fabric, you stitch your petals for the Tudor rows and then those will be stitched down. So there are my petals or a couple of them anyway. And you can see there's no, like you have your outside basting on the back, but that's it. Everything's done on the front. So, um, yeah, this is another one uh, I'd love to get back to, but it does take, you know, a good amount of mental capacity to work on. Um, you can see there's, you know, specialty stitches here, there's specialty stitches here. Um, there's a caterpillar that goes on here that will also be specialty stitches. This is filled in with specialty, so uh, it's specialty stitches abound, um, which is not for the faint of heart, although uh, also not necessary to be a super accomplished stitcher to be able to follow directions. So that's what's in here. And this is, so the sampler is called 10. I don't think that I said that. Um, and like I said, I came in a multitude of part in 10 parts, um, which she presented over the period of a day, uh, which was kind of fun. So, in fact, here is a close up photo of the first part that I'm working on. You can see that little caterpillar. Really fun. Okay, I'm not moving super quick tonight, uh, so I'm gonna have to speed it up if I'm gonna get through the rest of this box. And keep in mind, this is just box one. All right. Next up is in my Tula Pink uh, Pinkerville project bag. I made this myself. Vinyl front. And um, my friend uh, Mary gave me an M that I put on my zipper pull. So this was the first uh, bag that I made uh, when Sylvia and I were trading bags. Uh, I made one of these for her in pink and made one for myself in this kind of teal turquoisey blue and I really love this fabric um, that's on the inside. So this is, uh, and this is a piece that we decided to stitch together. So this is uh, Blackbird Designs, Our Lasting Friendship, and we are stitching uh, this sampler, which is this one. So, when we, when we pulled the threads for these, and I, of course, had to order some, um, I realized how similar all of the colors were. Like, there were, you know, two greens that looked almost identical, it was a lot of green and brown, which I was not super excited about. So I did add in a few other colors. I added in some pinks and uh, some gold 
and I think I added, I may have added in this darker brown. I just wanted to give it a little more variety, wood rose, um, because it was all, like this was basically the color palette. Eh. I just wanted it to have a little bit more variety. So, and I am stitching this on whatever the called for linen is, which is Legacy by Picture This Plus. It calls for 36, I'm doing it on 40. And here is my progress. So I started stitching the little um, outlines of the little cartouches for initials. My brain, it's getting late in the day and so my brain stopped working. Um, and then Sylvia started stitching this one because she wanted to put her initials in this one. Um, we just didn't quite have enough time together to do that. but. Um, I will have some other friends put their initials in here as well. So, uh, but it's a fun piece. I think once I get a little further into it with my colors, I will be happy with it. Um, but I mean, that's a pretty small start. One of these days. And it's not a huge piece, but you know. <gasps> okay. This is my other laminate bag. It is also a tulip pink. Uh, this is from her line, The Birds and the Bees. Uh, and I always refer to this as my cinnamon trees bag. So if you ever hear me say cinnamon trees, this is what I'm talking about because this color is cinnamon. Inside, made by you guessed it. This is another problem child. Village of Hawk Run Hollow carriage house samplings. Stitching it with DMC. So you may recall I'm doing shores in the MPI. This one I decided to do in DMC. It is on a mystery piece of linen, which I think is 36 count vintage exemplar. I think this was actually my piece of fabric that I had purchased to stitch uh, most noble pursuit and then never started it so it got repurposed so but this is another one that it's like mm, I don't know about my coverage I don't know if I love it so I've got block one done I've started block two and I started this in September, one year. So it was at the time that I was watching Emily's videos and she was talking about a September 1st start of this stitch along. I got all excited, I pulled all my stuff, and then I realized that I was watching older videos and so it was actually September of the previous year. But Abby Bellastitch stepped up and started it with me. And not only that, um, she started the Let's All Move to Hawk Run Hollow Facebook group, um, which I run. So if you like Hawk Run Hollow pieces, if you're stitching a Hawk Run Hollow piece, if you're thinking about a Hawk Run Hollow piece, please come and join Let's All Move to Hawk Run Hollow. And that phrase slash hashtag was created by Melissa at Golf Sky. So 
I started here in September and then I was like, oh, and speaking of which, my snake, you know, minders from Abby. Uh, then I was like, oh, well, it's dark 13 or dark October stitching. I really want to stitch the cemetery block. So then I decided, oh, I'll just count down until I get to the cemetery block and then I'll start that because I'm a freaking nut. But yeah, I started the cemetery block. I mean, when I look at it, my coverage actually isn't that bad. So maybe I'll keep going on it. I don't know. It's in timeout though. But I'm doing one over one. Yeah, one over one. So, and I stitched, so I did this on Shores too. I did this all in over one, like the whole background in over one. And I really like the way it looks on Shores. I'm not a huge fan of how it looks on this, and I don't know why. So a friend of mine, a local uh, guild member, also a friend of mine, stitched hers this way, which is where I got this idea and I loved it. Um, but for some reason, I don't know, I, I don't love the way that looks there. But I like it on the short, I don't. Anyway, so this is in timeout until I figure out what I want to do with it. I really want to stitch this. It's just, you know. Macaron bag, fabric that was bought in Paris, bag made by you know who. The inside is this pink. I don't know what this is. Oh, got it. And my pistachio green scissors that have my little scissor fob that I bought at the Paris Needlework Market that I just love. Okie dokie, here's another problem child. Are you sensing a theme? I got this out sometime recently because uh, Michelle Farm Girl and Jen from Felicity Stitches were getting theirs out to work on, so I got mine out too. Um, did Michelle finish hers? I think she did. Mine's still sitting here. So this is Birds of a Feather, Brenda Gervais with the needle and thread. This was a mystery sampler. I bought it when it was a mystery sampler. She released it in three parts. Um, yeah, I like it, but Here's my problem. So I think I'm stitching this on 40 count Confederate gray. That's my first problem, you know, cause it's weeks. Here's where I'm at. So I love how the red looks on the Confederate gray, but some of my other threads are just barely showing up there you can actually see it better on camera than you can in person. So I just got frustrated with it and put it away. And the other thing that sort of, you know, put a bad taste in my mouth was that I ordered this from my local needle workshop, not from the current owner, 
on previous owner. And I got part one. And then part two and part three just never seemed to get to me. And I would call. Yeah. And so then at that point, it was kind of like, you know, you know, once all the parts are out and you can't really participate with everybody else, it's just sort of like, mm, okay. And the colors are really pretty. But, you know, I don't know. And that red is Weeks Indian Summer. And it's so pretty. It's so pretty. But, oh, and here's my little fob that Carol from Garden of Stitches made me a million years ago. In a little exchange that we did. Or maybe this was for my birthday. I don't remember. Anyway. Yeah, so that's the reason that this is still in here and it's in timeout. Probably what I will end up doing is modifying some of the colors so that they show up a little better and I'm a little happier with them. But I'm still sort of disgusted with this. I was hoping that the stitch along with Michelle and Jen would kind of override that, you know, that bad taste in my mouth, but I didn't work on it long enough to really make that happen. Okay, here's another um, container short bag. This is actually not a whip. This is kitted, ready to go, but not started. And it is with my needle, Ellen Chester. A is for apple. And so it's this Adam and Eve box and then there's a needle book and Adam and Eve have their clothes on here and fig leaves here. And I actually want to stitch this, but with, you know, some of the motifs that are in this one. So I was sort of modifying and sort of combining the two. Um, at least that was my plan, which I obviously have not put into action. So, uh, along with that piece of Gondor linen that I got, uh, that I have my Henry VIII started on, I also have a flat burrito of uh, the same Gondor linen in this beautiful green color. And I thought, how perfect to stitch this on. This actually calls for kind of a teal dark teal colored fabric, but that works. And I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with this anyway. So, the perfect thing. And so I pulled some colors. I think some of them may be called for and some of them may be not. Either way, I have this great thread card. How fab is that? So that's my floss tag, and then I have threads on here. So not started, but it's here and ready to go whenever I feel like it. And I actually um, got this chart at our at the Tudor Rose 10th anniversary, we had a high tea, um, and this was my, we had a big sort of table full of charts uh, that you could choose from, and I chose this one as a door prize. So, um, here is a piece that was from summer school at the attic when I went, um, this was by Priscilla's Pocket, and so there's this sampler, which, you know, isn't totally my style. But then we made this big 
uh, or this was really the workshop, was making this big apple out of wool felt. And I really loved this. And I loved the idea of having this big apple, uh, you know, with some other Adam and Eve pieces. And maybe not with this worm charm, but maybe with a little Adam and Eve charm or something on there. Um, so I came across this the other day and I thought I should really get this out and work on it. And they gave us our threads and our needles that we need in this little needle book that was made out of, you know, a picture from the sampler. And then the inside looks like the inside of an apple. How fun is that? So, um, we are using, I believe, this is for the apple pin cushion, um, Weeks Dye Works Wool and uh, Weeks Dye Works Pearl thread in also in Indian summer and so we have a stick <laughs> that is for the stem and what we worked on in class was making the leaves so we cut them out and we attached them to uh, this um, twine and I still need to do this one I just have it glued down I haven't done the stitching on it um, and then here's the pearl thread that goes with it and then of course the beautiful wool and then there is a little button and then the worm charm which I think I'm gonna leave the worm charm off but that's a fun little piece that would be fun to work on when I don't want to think. And like I said, I thought it would be really cute with my Adam and Eve pieces. So I dug this out. We're almost at the end. All right, this is uh, my, oh, there's nothing in here. This is a Love You More studio bag that is also from Tula Pink Pinkerville. This was a gift from my friend Karen. Um, really pretty and nothing in it. This is a bag from Diana. It is Kismet Stitches that I couldn't pass up because it had this beautiful Tokyo Milk mermaid print on it that I just had to have. And it's one of her little half size bags. And I put this in here as sort of a travel project. I have not started it, um, but it's a full kit. It reminded me of Diana. So this is Not Forgotten Farm. So I have it all in here, ready to go, should I need, at some point in the future, a little travel project, but I have not started it. And then the last thing that is in this box is also not started, but look how pretty. It almost begs to be started, doesn't it? This is... A workshop by the Sampler that was done for my guild a long time ago and there was an extra kit I think and so I purchased it because the workshop had actually taken place I think before I joined 
and I ended up with an extra kit, so I purchased the kit. And this is Maria and Tony, and this is a picture of the sampler. It's a Mexican sampler. How fantastic is that? I love it so much. You, I don't. You can probably purchase this from uh, the S Sampler, her site itself. Um, she is the same designer that did Victorine Delacroix, which I have as a whip. So I have not started this yet, but every so often it calls to me. Every so often. And I believe the fabric is 40 count silk threads. And some of the stitches used are flame stitch variations, long armed cross, a reversible cross variation, satin, French knot, cross variations, and double running. It also contains spangles and a beaded section. One of these days, one of these days, but I need to get some of these whips dealt with first. Okay, so that's it. That's everything that's in bucket number one. So next time, we'll look at what's in bucket number two. All right, guys, that's all I have today. Thanks so much for joining, and um, I appreciate you. I appreciate all of um, the love that you give my videos and my posts and everything much appreciated and um, I also appreciate the good ideas the suggestions and um, the um, the support so uh, thanks so much for joining and uh, We'll talk to you again, hopefully, in a week. Thanks, guys. Bye.